Welcome to Morning Mastery is Why Wednesday. We're here daily to share with warriors like yourself, committed to your life and growth and mastery. I'm here with my partner, Michael Smikin, who's looking particularly dapper today. Michael, <laughs> right? Are you not? Happy birthday. Michael's birthday just passed. I am. Thank Are you me. feeling dapper today, Michael? I am feeling dapper today. It's outstanding. You look like you feel dapper. Does he not look that way? <laughs> so, loving Michael, right? So, on Why Wednesday, we're talking about um, paradigm shifts um, because, you know, what? how, how we're, our relationship with our why and who we are, who we perceive ourselves to be, is so rooted in our paradigm. And a quick definition of paradigm is sort of your processing uh, approach to the world. You know, like, um, you know, if you have a map or a computer program, they interpret things in a certain way. A map shows you what's going on, right? And, and a computer processor shows you a way to interpret the world. And for so many of us, we're completely unconscious of how that happens. You go, what does that have to do with your why exactly? Well, because the, really the first stage of understanding who we are is like understanding what our paradigm is and, and realizing that it's not just the byproduct of our genetics. So I'm like this because my dad was or my mom was or my family is. It's something completely different. It's, it's the conditioning that you've experienced for your entire life. So this Why Wednesday, we're asking you, hey, where's your paradigm and where do you take it from there? Michael, thoughts on paradigm? So, I mean... Paradigm can have an absolute uh, impact on all the things you do and the decisions that you make. And for many years, I was um, controlled by my own paradigms in terms of fear, what I fear, and where I put my focus. And that prevented me from having all the things that I wanted in my life. And By the way, Michael was part of two of our top 100 national jury verdicts when Michael first came in nine years ago. Michael was somebody who was incredibly polite, kind, mm -hmm. but Joe can call Michael Superman. I say I'm Batman, he's Superman, because <laughs> he believes like everybody's nice. I'm a, I'm a positive guy, but he believes like everybody taking the word, everybody's really nice, and I'm kind of more like Batman, where it's like I see the multi-dimensional complexity of humanity and the complexity of their whys and their emotions and those dynamics. So Michael would have people attacking him, approaching him as other lawyers, and had a significant effect, and he's completely transcended that to an unbelievable degree in producing the results he is. So yeah. And the way I was able to do that was to understand and appreciate that my fear was fear of failure. And once I understood that, I realized that my focus was on not failing or not losing. And so there was a huge disparity between not losing and winning. And so when I changed my focus to winning, the results that I saw inside my own life were tremendous. And you know, just last night, we were at one of our practice masteries, and we were standing um, with a group of, 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 of folks really nice, well-meaning, and super eager to really launch their own you know, business development and client development um, prospects themselves. And so one of the questions that I asked them was, like, what's your outcome? Like, what are you trying to achieve? And they both kind of stared at me blank face, not really fully understanding what, I, what it was I was talking about. And I go, well, if you're looking to, to really do more for business development and your client prospects, don't, shouldn't you have an outcome? Because if you said, hey, look, I'm going to do one of these practice mastery right. dinners myself, and you don't have an outcome, then you're going to walk out of the room and tomorrow you're going to wake up, motivation is going to be fleeting and it's going to be gone. And then so I talked to them and I walked them through their outcome and I go, now what does that mean to you? And then they looked at me again, blank face. I'm like, well, if you don't have something that supports that outcome, right? If you don't have some deep driving purpose or a deep driving why as to why you want to achieve that outcome, well then you're never going to achieve the outcome. It's going to be a number on a piece of paper somewhere and completely meaningless. And I started asking um, this gentleman questions. So it was two of them, and I started asking one of these gentlemen questions. And I go, well, why do you want that? 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 And by the third question, the guy starts laughing uncomfortably, right? right? And he goes, this is really good. And I go, what's good? And he goes, I, I feel a little uncomfortable. And I go, well, why do you feel uncomfortable? And he goes, I don't know. I've never said that to anybody else. And I go, let's keep going. And I said, why do you want this? Why? Why? And by the seventh question, I saw the guy's eyes well up, and I go, I'm going to stop right there. And I go, awesome. whatever it is you're beginning to feel, right, you're there. Keep going to yourself. I don't want to do this in front of your colleague. I don't know how uncomfortable you're going to feel, how much you're going to hate me if I keep doing sure. what I'm doing. But do that yourself. Keep going. And until your eyes well up, until you start crying, you're not going to develop that deep and powerful why. Yeah. Once you get there, write it down. Because it's not easy to get there all the time. And you attach that to the outcome you wanted to achieve, and I promise you, you will have all the things that you're looking for in your life. And that made all the difference for me once I understood that. Dude, I am so proud of you that you did that. I'm so proud of Michael's journey in growth and development. You know, we're kindred spirits. He's followed the lead, right? He's, he's journeyed forward. He's always trying to help and contribute in massive and significant ways. So I'm so thankful for you, brother. And just remember this on Why Wednesday. If you want a thing, 
right? There's gonna be, it's like two waves hitting each other. Say it's like, oh, I want a new car, right? Um, that new car is gonna be like the little wave and then the wave of pain to do the things to get that new car. Let's say you need extra income or a new house or a vacation home, whatever the thing is, is the pain is gonna be a tidal wave over the top of it. The super tidal wave over the top of the pain is the why Michael's explaining. When you get to that emotional point, when you start thinking about using the gifts God has given you, the talents, the abilities, looking at your children, building a legacy, what you'll think about when you're lying in your deathbed, when you start getting to that zone, now you're approaching your true why. And that's what's gonna drive your behavior forward. Without that why, like Michael said, it's just concepts and dreams somewhere that the pain of day to day, the fear of rejection, fear of failure, all those negative things that come up are gonna overwhelm you. Hey, it's why Wednesday, Dig deep, ask yourself why, 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 get way past the thing, get to that internal um, component, and think about your paradigm. Is your one, uh, paradigm one of growth? Is it one of openness? Is it one of listening to a video like this and saying, hey, how do I apply that? How do I take that further? Or is it like, yeah, yeah, I know that stuff, right? And that will be the difference between you getting to your ultimate incredible destiny or not. I'm Sean Calgie with my partner, Michael Smike, and have an amazing day. Thanks.